Reflexes can then be assessed. We are looking for evidence of lower versus upper motor neuron disease. Lower motor neuron will show you decreased or absent reflexes. Upper motor neuron will show you normal or increased reflexes. Three reflexes in the front, three reflexes in the back. The first reflex in the front we're going to look at is called the biceps reflex. We are assessing a reaction in the biceps after stimulating that tendon. This is a pure tendinous reflex. The biceps is a flexor, therefore we will extend the leg to put the maximum tension on the tendon. We extend the leg, wrap the finger around the biceps tendon, and gently tap our own finger. You will get a response by contraction of the biceps or a twitch in the toes. Nice contraction of the biceps. If I do the lower leg, I simply extend by putting a finger behind the elbow, wrapping my finger around the biceps tendon, and tapping my finger. On that leg, I get more of a twitch on her toe. The next reflex, and this will cover, by the way, your muscular cutaneous nerve, the cranial aspect of your thoracic intumescence. The next one is assessing the radial nerve, or the triceps reflex, which will cover C7, 8, and T1. Go ahead and flex the extensor muscle, like and that will tighten your tendon by flexing the elbow and go ahead and gently tap. You may want to abduct a little bit the elbow to create extra tension. You will see contraction of either or all of the tricep bellies. The last reflex in the thoracic limbs will be the withdrawal, which is a nociceptive reflex. You want to go ahead and simply grab the toes and gently pinch them and you see the dog pulling the leg away. That is a withdrawal. As we make our way towards the back legs, we'll assess three more reflexes. We want to go ahead, first of all, work with the patellar reflex, which will assess the femoral nerve and the quadriceps muscle. We gently flex the leg, creating extra tension on the tendon of the patellar, and gently tap. See a nice response of the kick. This will assess L4 to L6 in the spinal cord. Same thing on the bottom. Flex the leg a little bit, gently tap the patellar tendon. The second reflex we can go ahead and perform is a gastrocnemius, Achilles heel. This tendon will go ahead and pull on the hog and flex the stifle. So we want to go ahead and flex the hog and extend the stifle to create maximum tension on the gastrocnemius. As I go ahead and tap this tendon, I'm looking for contraction of the semimembranosus tendinosus which I see a little bit off, but not as strong as other reflexes in Rosie. Same thing on the other limb. The last reflex you want to do, that will also assess the sciatic, same as the gastrocnemius, L7 to S1, will go ahead and do the withdrawal, which is a nociceptive reflex. Simply take the toes and pinch them. The interesting thing in Rosie is as I do withdrawal, she has what's called a cross extensor. As I bring one leg up, the other leg, opposite limb, is extended. This only, only indicates upper motor neuron lesion, nothing to do with severity. We know Rosie has most likely degenerative myelopathy and probably has a lesion between the front and the back legs, T3 to L3 myelopathy, causing the cross extensors. Two more reflexes to look at. Second last reflex is called the perineal. We're going to simply stimulate the perineal area, area of the scrotum or vulva, and look for a wink around the rectum. As I squeeze around the vulva, Rosie winks her rectum. This is normal. Perineal nerve is normal. S1 to S3. And the last reflex we assess, especially important in those vaccines that come with back injuries to localize approximately where the problem is, would be the cutaneous strongi. I usually take a pair of forceps for this, and we'll go ahead and simply pinch the skin on each side and look for a twitch response as so. Same thing on the other side. This will go ahead and assess a lateral thoracic nerve that innervates the cutaneous trunchi. You should have a response on both sides, whether you pinch left or right. 